Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam Sayyidi, when some of the companions met Dajjal on an island and reported back the meeting experience to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu was that through a portal as well? I don't know. I think they physically entered somewhere where he was chained and I don't think he's physically they were able to physically see that so they must have entered into some realm in which in the Indian Ocean they witnessed his personality and being chained in that region. But again these are the, the stories and examples throughout Islam of their movement through time and space and, and realms that are not uh, visible to people. But holy companions they have immense yaqeen and certainty from the reality of Prophet If we're training people to connect now then imagine how much of Divine Grace had dressed them because of their proximity and nearness to the reality of Prophet they have accounts of witnessing Sayyidina Isa salam, Jesus Christ peace and blessings be upon him. That they witnessed, they went to a ravine in which everybody was coming for a healing and they saw a very old gentleman come out, heal people and go back in and hide. And this was probably from the appearance of Sayyidina Isa salam, whom doesn't reside upon this realm but may manifest at any time to do anything necessary. They come from behind the mountain of Kaf, means they hide within the heart of Prophet and they veil their physicality. But doesn't mean that their spirituality is ever veiled. They don't need to appear in a physical or physical form that you know. It's only the servant that has good manners may come across all of them. At any time you can come across Sayyidina Isa, Jesus Christ peace and blessings be upon him. By your good deeds, good character he can appear as anyone but he won't acknowledge himself of who he is. But the one whom has a good heart and good character understands that there's an immense Divine Grace dressing them. But the one who meditates and contemplates through his spirituality then connecting through the way that the connection has been taught so that shaitan doesn't play with the servant. They connect with the shaykh so that they know that they're in the shaykh's presence. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Presence. The shaykh has a field of energy that when you connect, why? You say, why do you have to connect with the shaykh? Because you can't open up for any portal. So if you sit and say, I'm just going to meditate and call upon something. But then you're asking that now any type of creature can come before you because you don't see and immediately begin to manifest images for you. That can be a very dangerous portal. Because these people who say, I have a spirit guide, we say, do you see? I said, no. I said, well you don't even know what your spirit guide is doing? So you need a living shaykh, say, I see you, I know what you look like, I know how you talk and how you act and what you teach and I'm going to make a connection to see you, call your name and at that time I feel that presence of the shaykh is in front of me, I know who he is, I hear his sound, I watch the, the tapes. There's a familiarity and a result of that connection means now the energy and the aura of the shaykh is a shield, exactly like the portals in these sci-fi movies. As soon as you meditate your soul is now entering into his dimension and from his dimension now I want to be with Sayyidina Isa 
then you meditate and contemplate and go safely into that reality. Without that, well any shaitan can appear because you don't see, shaitan can appear as any light, as anything that he wants. And that's the danger, that's why the muraqabah is taught that you need a living guide, not a dead guide, you need a living guide. One that you understand, you accompanied, you learned and as a result you feel the presence and the meditation and the energy with that soul and as a result you've made that connection. When the shaykhs have passed away and they certified an individual and made him into a shaykh means his connection is of an extraordinary connection. So his connection now is in their realm all the time. But the one whom's trying to learn how to connect, they need the living guide in which they hear, they watch, they understand, they learn, they act and interact and then they connect with his soul. As a result that soul becomes a portal in which they move into that reality with their soul and then they move amongst those pious souls. And that's the madad of the shaykhs calling upon the silsila and the chain of Naqshbandiya so that all those souls are with that servant dressing them and blessing them, inshaAllah. Think of all the different portals in Islam. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi there's so many videos of portals and alien videos on Facebook and YouTube now it seems to be very popular. Please allow me to be in your portal of protection. Allah bless you. I'm, no, I'm nothing but you, you keep meditating, contemplating and we said it's going to get much more astonishing. They're going to open things. So Dajjal is going to start his magic show. But this way with Allah there is no magic show. Either you believe and you come based on belief. But if you come, oh there, there, there's something open down the street, it's a portal, something happening. Yeah, because their magic show is going to be open for all, shaitan doesn't discriminate. But Rahman is like, no, you need belief and high security clearance to enter in these divine realities. So they want good character, no thief, no crook, no, no, none of these bad things going through there. So there's a firewall, you have to clean, purify and have good character, enter into Allah's firewall and make sure that your, your security's clearance is correct. So it requires work but Dajjal no, he wants everybody fire, he's a fire himself because they enter and they all become fiery. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam So if the awliya and circles of zikrs are portals then what are the signs of the negative portals so we can protect ourselves and stay away? A shopping mall. What do you mean what are the signs of negative? Uh, all, all around you your life is completely surrounded by the, uh, negative uh, portals. Anywhere where people are gathering for other than Allah is a negative portal. The malls are negative portals, you have to go and take your kids to get clothing but it's still negative, it doesn't mean it's a positive place to be. So anything of a negative nature, now watch all the internets, all of those are portals. You turn on those television shows, that's a portal and energy's coming through. So everything, everything, everything is a means in which to attract people towards Dajjal. And that's why they give their signs and they, they close their one eye and put their eye out. They're giving signs for their portal, like portal ahead, come, come listen to us. Their musics are portals, they, they, they know that they're casting demons when they're reciting. We just released a video about the, the frequency, the uses of frequencies are, are known portals for them. Instead of at 1423 megahertz I think they go down to 430 megahertz which creates a, a disturbance in the heart, they know what they're doing. So these are all portals, their movies, their sounds, everything is meant to destroy the frequency of humanity. And the Divine portals are energies and angels and praisings and salawats and, and, and positive and healthy associations in which to build the energy of the soul inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Can you please speak about the portal for those who passed away and how can Salatul Janaza help? The 
the state of passing means they're now entering into uh, the Hayat al-Barzaq, the reality of the grave. So that, that's something uh, of a reality that their physicality is dying, dead and now they're entering into the reality of the grave. The janazah has an immense intercession for those whom entering into the grave. That the lights, the prayers and the reality of the janazah is to make the hardship of the grave to be lightened. And the, the most powerful reality of that janazah is Surat Yaseen and the immensity. Because once you understood the love and the greatness of Sayyidina Muhammad that as soon as you recite Surat Yaseen upon the one whom passing or passed or continuously reciting Surat Yaseen upon them, then they are gaining the intercession and the lights of Sayyidina Muhammad upon them and all its haqqaiqs are dressed upon that reality, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam From your teachings on the reality of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah in Surah Kahf verse 60 Sayyidina Musa salam wanted to reach where the two oceans meet Majma al-Bahrain In the next verse 61 is mentioned Sayyidina Musa salam reached where the two oceans meet Majma Bainihim but was unaware Is this describing the dress or knowledge of Sayyidina Khidr Well that uh, I wouldn't have any idea. But what is, what we described before you asked that was the who. That this ocean of reality is, what do they call Bahr al Mahjur? Between La ilaha illallah, between the salt water and sweet water. Bahr Marju, the, there's a like a barzakh between sweet water and salt water. And there are things that live in salt water, things that live in sweet water. But where the two oceans meet, there's a barzakh, there's a dimension, and the fish that live in that dimension only live in that dimension. They can't go into the sweet, they can't go into the salt. So means that when they passed this reality there's a servant from La ilaha illallah and this servant is highly connected to Muhammadun Rasulullah So he wanted the knowledge of the who man and that's when we talked all about the who. So Sayyidina Khidr Sayyidina Abbas Khidr represents the who man. They represent the who and that's what Nabi Musa wanted, that I want where this reality of who, what is this secret of who? The secret that all oh, this universe has this power of who and this is the ha and wow, this hidayat and guidance and the wow of wadood. So it means that these are the guides of love. And they're trained with love, trained with the character of, of Divinely love. That's why Sayyidina Musa salam was, Allah described Sayyidina Khidr salam, one whom attained a rahmah, a love and then we taught him knowledges. So he wasn't a, 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 a jurisprudence, a judge, but he was a servant that trained in a different way by Allah they attain an immense love and yearning for the Divine and then God Allah God Almighty begins to open their heart for knowledges and realities. And that's what's important, that Allah opened for them from that servant. So what Nabi Musa was wanting from this ocean is the secret of where these two oceans because when you're Musa Rasulullah you think you have a connection with La ilaha illallah but was not known that no your Musa Rasulullah is an agency within Muhammadun Rasulullah means the only Risalat, the only one of that reality in which Allah created creation for that reality 
is Muhammadun Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So you had to negate your risalat and be nothing to witness the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And that's what Sayyidina Musa salam wanted. So the way to the door of Prophet is through humbleness and humiliation. And that's why Sayyidina Musa, Prophet Moses peace and blessings be upon him took the humiliation of Sayyidina Khidr Because as soon as he met him he said, I'm going to crush you and efface you because you're not coming as a Prophet into the presence of Prophet you're coming as a servant of Allah into that presence. And as a result Sayyidina Khidr had permission to keep crushing, keep crushing because he gave him a lot of disclosures. He said, you want to come? Don't ask any questions until I ask and give you permission. And don't ask what something you don't have any knowledge of and you keep wanting to ask. It gave a very hard time to Sayyidina Musa And why Sayyidina Musa took it is because of his deal to be with Prophet and I want what you have, I want to be in your nation and under your ummah. And then the, the ideal was then you can't be a Prophet, you have to be nothing to enter into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's why Jesus Christ peace and blessings be upon him is the same. He said, I don't want to meet Sayyidina Muhammad after I die, I want to meet him now in my life, I want to be under his nation now. And Allah raised him to the heavens not to be killed by, by Judas whom betrayed him. As a result when he comes back in the last days he doesn't come back as a Prophet of Allah He comes back under the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad Not coming to say, I'm now the, uh, the second Prophet, I'm coming back as another Prophet. He's coming back on this earth under the nation and flag of Sayyidina Muhammad to say to serve within the Muhammadan nation and that's why his burial site is next to Prophet in Medina to Munawwara. And there is a grave burial site in Medina in the house of Prophet So it has a very immense spiritual reality. So that each of them were wanting to serve under the reality of that nation. So what God gives to you, you have to give it back. When God gives to us our will, so the only thing God wants back from us is the will, give me back your will. Surrender your will so that my will is more important than your will. Thy will will come, thy kingdom will come and that's the whole secret. Who will surrender their will to God Almighty because He gave us free, free will, we don't have to listen. But submission means I'm going to surrender my will, that's the Lord's Prayer, Thy Kingdom come, Thy will be done, God's will will be done on earth which is my heart as it is in heaven. So it means that His heavenly Kingdom must reside within my heart so then my life on earth must be very heavenly, not tailgate party. Right? You can't do crazy things, you can't uh, be a terrorist, you can't go kill, you can't do anything bad. Because you're asking that my kingdom of God is in my heart and I want my, my, my paradise kingdom upon this earth, then conduct yourself accordingly. Be sincere, have good character, don't cheat, steal, don't do these things that are bad so that God's kingdom can reside within the heart of that servant. And that's all that Allah wanted from everyone is, give me back the will, inshaAllah. Sayyidi Mawlana Shaykh described the shaitanic system needs a physical device or mechanism to create a portal mm. while the saints their soul is enough but can a servant who's gone astray be a demonic portal? A servant who's gone astray? Sure. Because he gave himself to shaitans and then those people become satanic portals. <clears throat> Definitely, those were in the talks of manifestation, right? You manifest who you're with. So if people 
give themselves to negative energies then imagine very negative energies are all around that person, they gave themselves to them. As a result they're portals of negativity because they don't have light so they don't emit a light, they're more like a vacuum, like a, a darkness in which everything dark enters in and every darkness exits from them. So then they bring about immense darkness, ifrit and, and very bad energies upon people. Pious people can feel an, a horrific energy from these types of people and as a result the two don't mix. So pious people their energies burn these types of people so they don't, they're not interested in hanging out with religious crowds. And at the same time the negative energy is so bad that again the people whom are vibrating higher and cleaner energies they're not interested in accompanying these types of people and being around these types of energies because everybody's feeling the energy. The bad one feels the burn, they don't know why but they feel like they're being burned because the devils in them are, are now being agitated by the light of that individual. And that's why you see many times in their gang movies and, and all of their expressions is, what are you looking at, right? Because the eye of the servant is the window of his soul, through his eyes he can burn you. So he keeps his gaze down, he's not interested in this type of interference. But when God Almighty activates their soul for whatever battles will be taking place upon earth, they merely have to look like a fire from hellfire will come out of their eyes and begin to burn everything. So these movies you watch of superheroes with ridiculous outfits, it's a superhero less that outfit, right? Because the majestic outfit is the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad not tights and spandex outfits, right? Why shaitan puts that like that? Yeah, but no, in, in like you would watch in Korean movies, mm. full on jubbas. They all had jubbas, all have head coverings and they were doing all their martial arts in full jubbas. How they were doing like that? Means there was the majesty of the heavens. But when Allah want to activate the realities of, of how powerful creation is, means just from their eyes alone like a dragon, fire will come from the fires of hell that nothing can contain it, it goes after these shaitans burns them and brings them in and goes. So one movie that was an example of that was Hell Rider. It's not a good movie for people but you see it in these movies. But he would look at people and they would scream and yell the horrific things they were doing because his fire was casting something into their memory of what you did all your life of crime, it's known. And then begin to burn them with a fire into their reality means that these realities are very powerful. So right now everybody just keep their head down and, and go about your business. But why it says that in that movie is because the eyes of people burn bad people. They have no light, they gave away the contract of their light. Shaitan bought and gave them some cash and took away the power of their soul. They're left empty. So in their movies they keep telling, don't look at me, what you looking at, what are you looking at my eyes? Because the eyes have so much power. So that's why Prophet gave to us is, keep your gaze down, look your down your energy, don't let people to take your energy out. So but in the last days Allah inshaAllah will activate the heart of the believer and the seven powers within their heart and the immensity of the, the kingdom of God when Allah said, thy kingdom come, people have no understanding what that means. So it requires sacrifice now, be good now, practice now, build yourself now for a day is coming when the kingdom of God is ready to open and, and marshal in a new reality, inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi, do Ouija boards open portals? If definitely. so, how to close it? Yeah, definitely. Funny that it's sold in Walmart. Now go figure, you know, they know how dangerous that is. Anytime you summon something negative, very difficult to break it. So that's what we said at the beginning of the year, our whole understanding is in A'uzu Billah. 
What's the first order God gave to us? A'udhu billahi min ash shaitanir rajeem, seek refuge in God from the accursed Satan. He didn't say, go fight Satan, he said, seek refuge in me because you don't know the power of what I gave him. Seek refuge in me from the accursed one. So our whole life is based on that. If you break that, you're in a tremendous difficulty, dangers is awaiting. So it means that in my life is like, if I'm going to go to that event and they're doing bad things, I'm breaking my ozu. Because you know these kids enter into these concerts and to these events, this is not in your auzu, this is not in your contract. By entering into that event, you're now open to be under attack. But when you drive and you sit in your home, you're doing your zikr, you're in your auzu. That you are seeking refuge in Allah from every accursed negative energy. This is our protection. So anytime the servant has to contemplate this move, this thing, this thing I want to do, does it break that covenant? And if it does, don't do it. And to keep within that covenant then is the protection for the servant. So that becomes very, very important. If they step out of it and continuously step out of it, they risk the chance of under attack and possession and every type of difficulty. When you clearly break that and say, I want to summon shaitans and conjure all these different things, they will not leave you. You broke that contract. They will not leave. They enter into that space and they attach themselves to that individual. <coughs> and then very horrific things begin to happen to these types of people. So these are difficult and people who played with that in, in their youth then inshaAllah Allah save them because they're able to text and write to us but the, those many of those people were under great affliction. Then to protect yourself with taweez, with the practices, with taweezes in the house so that any type of negativity that's sort of hiding but maybe not making itself too present, then these are all the spiritual protections. The taweezes then again have a, a statement of faith. That I trust in Allah I'm humble servant of Allah and that I place these taweezes in my home for Allah to see my humility. And as a result of my belief, I believe that there are lights in those realities. These were written by Prophet given to these awliyaullah, this is not something then would be wasted. As a result of my faith, if Prophet gave that to these awliya, as soon as I display that, this is from the holiness of Sayyidina Muhammad And as a result they are my defenders, they are the ones whom keep me sustained. That Allah's love and blessings be upon the nazar of Prophet and that Prophet's nazar be upon his awliya and watching all those whom follow with love inshaAllah. So has immense power, immense blessings. We said before even your house when you put an ADT sign. And ADT is not even from paradise. You know the alarm company? Mm. We have a ADT or who we have oh. TELUS in Canada. You put a stein that TELUS guarding this house. It's not even from paradise but it scares burglars because they say, I'll go to the house that doesn't have this. Why won't this problem with a camera looking at me? They probably have alarm in this house and they got this and this. So these are the signs Allah say, Allah say, oh if TELUS has it, you don't think Allah has it? Yeah, but it requires faith. So when you have these, the shaitans look and say, ah oh, well, let's not deal with this, probably some, something in there going to come after us. So let's just go to this guy's house next door that has nothing. <laughs> As Salaamu Sayyidi In terms of portals, what's the reality Zuleha gaining back her youth after finding love for the Divine? In the previous talks, you mentioned she represented dunya chasing after Sayyidina Yusuf. <laughs> Where are we on that one? We're just trying to find different examples of portals? <laughs> I don't know about her portal, that's not, not related. Yeah, inshaAllah. That we got to have food for thought. Thank you for the question and we'll think about it. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi. But these, these, these portals, <laughs> when they go, Salaamu <laughs> These portals are the fountains of youth. So the people of dhikr, they have an immense youthful innocence. And we describe that in, in our travels that 
people look like painted clowns. They hide their dead flesh with these paints and it's not fooling anyone. The fragrance of the rotting corpse is ever apparent in the bad character and nature of people. And it's like these horrific movies, the corpse is dying and they just keep painting themselves in the quest to live a thousand years. When they forgot that true youth and true beauty is your soul. When your soul is energized, your soul has power, your soul has light and, and love of the Divine, the soul's light comes out and rejuvenates the entire look and the appearance of the person. And then what other people see is the immense light, not the flesh. They may even see your flesh is always luminous but it's the light that coming out. And the one who have all their clown features still not luminous and doesn't fool anyone. So the true beauty is within the soul and energizing and empowering the soul with the power of zikr, the power of these spiritual practices, they're luminous, they're lit up and as a result they look younger, live younger. The one whom is exhausted by this physical world and dried up like leather, then this world took them, dried them and cast them out. But the one whom is luminous within their reality and their soul, that's something completely different. And they look like they're younger, they act like they're younger. So it means Allah's portals of zikrs actually have an immense energy on, on the souls and, and the nature of people. So these are inhabitants of paradise, eating from paradise, drinking from paradise and <coughs> imagine all the lights that are coming on them from paradises versus people who are living in just the physical world, physical burdens, physical hardships, physical difficulties, everything they eat is poisonous to them by energy, everything they drink is toxic for them by energy, in the end it's just filled with worms that will greet them in the grave. So completely different, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi <coughs> Walaykum As Salaam Ramtullah. As you mentioned last week, the door to the qalb is the ba, Baba Hu, the immense love and reverence for Sayyidina Ali alayhi salam. From a haroof understanding, if you can please explain the entryway to the cave, kahf, the letter fa. Is this your question? <laughs> That's good, alhamdulillah. InshaAllah the, the I think we talked the other night about the importance of Jabal Kaf and tonight was the opening of that understanding that the importance of the mountain, the greatest mountain of Allah is then the Muhammadan haqqaiq and to enter into that reality is the journey of this practice that we're doing, Shams al-Arafeen, is that we're entering in and a journey towards the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and what emanations are coming from that heart and that's why all the teaching was then if we're journeying towards the heart of Prophet it becomes the fountainhead of all power to our soul and that we call manzil Qur'an that this Qalb is the house of Holy Qur'an and we're asking to enter into that reality of Holy Qur'an. Say if the Surah Yaseen is the heart of Qur'an, the heart of Surah Yaseen is Fatiha, the Fa, right? So Qur'an, this power, its heart means its bullet 
of, of how to reach to the power of Qur'an, Allah then teaching, go to Yaseen Sallallahu he's the heart of my Qur'an. So actual Yaseen, Yaqeen as sami he has the perfection of hearing. So then you must also reach to Yaqeen as sami you have to have the perfection of hearing, not seeing because if you hear right and hear correctly, meditate and clean the hearing, it opens up the yaqeen and certainty. And then the heart of Surah Yaseen is then in the Surah Fatiha and this is the opening. And the seven holy openings and the seven ha-meem, these are powers in which Allah created all creation, ha-meem, ha-meem, ha-meem. These are each of the verses of Surah Fatiha opened up the realities of ha Mim and these are Haqiqat al-Muhammadiyyah. These are the immense realities of Sayyidina Muhammad So then you would study for the fata and the openings, what fa is, is the Fatiha, is the opening. So it means the reality of the ba opened and what then opened was Fatiha. So all of Qur'an is emanating from Surah Fatiha out, which are like seven waterfalls that the Qur'an. So if you went to the Qur'an like an ocean and you approach this immense power that can't be understood like Niagara Falls, it would be coming out of seven streams, which are the seven verses, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, the highest. All the way down to where we said, Alhamdulillahi Rahman Rahim, Maliki wa Midiya, Kabudi wa Kinistain, Edina Sirat al Muslim, Sirat al Ladina, Anamta alayhim, Ayd al Maghdubi alayhim wa ladalin are the entry points. Why you have to enter from where Allah are angry and those who went astray? These are the zawiyas of the shaykh. And then that goes into the whole tafsir that we gave on Surah Fatiha. So from each verse of Surah Fatiha, all of Qur'an is emanating, means any verse that has to do with hamd is in the door of Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Anything that has to do with Sifat al-Rahman is from Ar-Rahman al-Rahim. Anything that has to do with Rahim is from Ar-Rahman al-Rahim. So it's the root of all of Qur'an's emanations and powers and, and realities. So and all of that we call Liwal Hamd, the flag of praise, which is Sayyidina Muhammad So anywhere you look, it's going to be Muhammadun Rasulullah That's why Prophet is called the flag of praise, he's the flag of Surah Fatiha. So this is the reality of the soul of Prophet that from these seven fountain springs all this reality of Qur'an is coming out. The highest is when you went to the crown where it says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. So, alhamdulillah, inshaAllah, Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzat Amma Yasifoon, Wa Salaamun Al Mursaleen, Wa Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Bi Hurmati Muhammad Al Mustafa, Bi Siri Surat Al Fatiha. Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.